What's up? I thought I would uh, jump on here and give y'all an update about the spark situation and tell y'all a little kind of a funny story that happened at work yesterday. Um, and I thought I would go ahead and talk to you again while I get ready because it's either that or in my car. So I'll just do it now. Um, so, you know, if you saw my other video that I was trying to spark to earn some extra money for Christmas, deliver groceries and stuff from Walmart. And when I went to scan in my ID and my face, it deactivated me because apparently uh, their computer or whatever does it don't know how to know if I got a new driver's license, I guess. Um, my hair was different. I don't know. Anyway, they deactivated me and I appealed it and I got a thing back saying that I was still deactivated, but it was because I had to have a valid driver's license to spark. So I appealed it one more time and told them that that is a valid driver's license, that my old license had expired and so I got it renewed and the license that I showed was my new driver's license. So they said they was gonna, I guess, check into it. So then I got a, a text the next day saying that they, they decided to go ahead and leave it deactivated. And on the text, every word of the text started with an F. It's like they wrote the text right, but in every single word in the text, there was an F before the word. Like they, they don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. There was just an F before every word. Now imagine opening a text that explains something to you and you're like, what? <laughs> And you have to look at it close and you're like, oh, this actually says what it's supposed to say, but there's an F in front of every word. So I'm like, at that point, I'm like, what the heck? I, I don't know. <clears throat> so I went ahead and used that email that Tony had found for me. And I emailed him. And I told him what happened. I told him that I got a new driver's license. They didn't ask for the new driver's license necessarily because the old one had expired, Mila. But they asked because they wanted to verify me. And when I scanned it and scanned my face, they deactivated me. Mila, please. I don't want to play right now. I'm getting ready for work. <laughs> Mila. Sorry, y'all, I had to stop and go play with Mila for a minute. I haven't even finished my <laughs> foundation. Anyways, um, where was I at? Yeah, so I emailed them and told them, you know, what had happened and that I was deactivated. So the next day, I got another text saying that they decided to reactivate me and to go in and verify my identity and all this. So I didn't do it for a few days because I was busy. I was only going to spark on my day off anyway, or maybe on a Saturday before work. So I went last night and was going to, you know, we finally slowed down at work. It was the end of the night. So really quick, I was going to go in and scan my license and my face or whatever they wanted me to do. And every time I click on the little thing that tells me to do that, it would like flash and come back and not let me do anything. A little while later, I noticed that it said the businesses are closed. So, like, I noticed the time and it was past time for, like, Walmart and stuff to be closed. So, I was like, well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it won't let me do that because, you know, maybe it thinks I'm wanting to spark now. And so, it's not letting me in. So, I waited and I tried it again today. Same thing. So, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm about tired of dealing with it. I'll tell you that much. 
I'm sure I'll have Tony or one of the kids look at it for me or maybe even email them and see if I can figure it out again. But if I email them and they tell me what to do and it don't work again, I'm done. Three strikes, that's enough. That's enough for me, I'm done. Because all it is is like a lot of other stuff in life nowadays, it's just a big old stressful situation. And I'm not about that right now. So, there's that story. <laughs> On a good note, I'm trying to get my house in order so I can do my Christmas decor haul and my Christmas decorate with me. That's going to be fun for me. That's one of the funnest things I do all year. One of the funnest things I do all year. <laughs> now, the funny story I wanted to tell y'all that happened at work yesterday. It wasn't funny at the time. I was PO'd, but later it was funny. Like, because of what it was. It was just stupid and funny. You know, you never know what's going to happen when you're working with the public. You really don't. You know, you can have a great day. You can have a bad day. It can just be a silly day or a crazy day. It can start off good and end up bad or start off bad and end up good. You just never know. So anyway, this was my second delivery yesterday. It was pouring down rain and I got a double. We was so busy yesterday because we had call-ins, people called out from work and stuff. But, um, so I had a double, both of them was apartments, but they were two different apartments. The first apartment put their apartment number, the gate code. Let's see, did they put the gate code? No, they did not put the gate code. They put the apartment number. And the second one didn't even put their apartment number. So I had to have somebody, I could have done it myself, but she volunteered. Somebody at work called and got their apartment number. So when I got to the first delivery at the gate, I had to call the lady. I'm like, hey, this is Vicki from Domino's. I'm at the gate. So she gave me the gate code. I got in. I went to the apartment that it said. I knocked. I waited. I knocked again. I waited some more. And I called her. I mean, at this point, it had probably been uh, three to five minutes since the first time I talked to her when she knew I was at the gate and she knew I was on my way to her apartment. So I called her. Hey, this is Vicki with Domino's. I'm at your door. She goes, oh, okay. You know, and hung up. I didn't knock again because I shouldn't have to. So I just waited. And I probably went ahead and waited a good two to three minutes that time. I normally wait somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute between knocks. But since she knew I was there, I had just talked to her on the phone. I gave it two or three minutes, you know, who knows? Maybe she's using the bathroom. Maybe she's not dressed. You know, I, I give them a little bit of time. And so she didn't come. So I called the store. I called Domino's and my manager answered and I said, told her what happened. I'm like, I've already talked to this lady twice. She knew I was coming in the gate. She knew I was here. She said, okay. And I've been waiting and she's still not at the door. It is paid for. There's a small tip on there, $2. And so, um, I said, I don't want to leave it at the door because it's wet. It's been raining and the little concrete in front of her door is wet. And so she said, well, let me give her a call. And about that time, this little boy comes running up from out of nowhere, maybe 10 years old. And he says, that's our order. Let me tell you, kids do this all the time. Even adults will do it. So you don't just hand anybody that comes up and says that's their order. You don't give it to them. So I told my manager and she said, well, let me call the lady. She called her. The lady don't answer. But while she's calling her, I'm not stepping out in the rain again. I've done been in the rain twice. Once to walk to her door and once to walk back to my car to get my phone to call her because normally I don't even leave my phone in the car, but my car was like right there. I could see it. Went and got, you know, so I went and got that. So I've done been in the rain twice over this order, not counting getting in my car, but I mean, that's on me. It's a part of the job, but that don't mean I wanna stand out in the rain all day long over somebody you'll see what the situation was in a minute, but so I can hear her hollering something. I'm on hold with my manager. My manager's trying to call her. 
And I can see the little boy saying, she has to talk to her manager first. And the lady said something else. And he's like, she's waiting on her manager. So I guess she's asking what's going on. Where's her food? Anyways, the, my manager comes back and she says, she's not answering the phone. At this point, the dad comes up. I'm assuming it's the dad. It's a man. So the little boy's standing there. The dad's standing there. And she said, she's not answering. And I said, well, the dad's here. I guess the man's here. And she said, well, make sure they know the name and the phone number on the ticket. And if it's right, then give it to them. But I told the guy, I said, I just talked to her twice within the last few minutes. Cause they're saying, let me backtrack a little. The little boy was saying from the get go, cause I told him, I said, I just talked to your mom a couple of times and she knew I was here and she didn't say anything about anything different. And he said, well, we don't live here anymore. We live down there. And I said, well, what's your address? He says, I don't know. I, and that's the point where I said, I just talked to your mom twice in the last few minutes and she knew I was here and she didn't say anything about it being a different address. So I said, so he, he says, well, my mom don't know the address. Really? <laughs> Your mom don't know her address. Okay, okay. Benefit of the doubt. Maybe she don't know her address. Maybe they moved yesterday. I don't know. It's the same apartments. So all she's got to know is an apartment and a building number. But she don't know it. So okay. So of course, like I said, then the dad comes up. You know, and I told him, I said, I've been trying to, uh, I mean, I've talked to your uh, wife or whoever on the phone a couple of times in the last few minutes. She knew I was here. She didn't tell me y'all had a different address. And he says, well, last week, somebody brought us our pizza and they brought it to our new address. So he's implying that he don't know it either because still at this point, nobody has told me the new address. I know none of this makes sense. I was PO'd at the time because it was raining. I'm wasting time that I can be making money and you got a whole family here that don't know their new address. When all they got to know is a building and apartment number. So, um, he's implying to me that I should have known their address. He's like, well, they brought our pizza to our new address last week. I didn't. So, I don't know what's up with that. But, he verified the name and the phone number. So, I gave him the food. And when I was leaving, I could see the mom standing on the balcony and she's like, thank you. And really nice. I was nice back. Even though what I wanted to say was, I just talked to you on the phone twice. You couldn't have possibly told me that you was at a different address. Anyways, I didn't say that. I was nice. I was nice. But this is my point. After all that, a whole family don't know their address, but I'm supposed to know their address. <laughs> That's the funny part. <laughs> this is some of the stuff I deal with, y'all. For real, all the time I deal with silly little stuff like that. And it's raining. It's, it's raining the whole time this is going on. Luckily, you know, the part I was standing on was covered. That makes no sense. So when I left, I can clearly see since she's on the balcony, which building she's in. And I can't see the apartment number, but I know which apartment it is. So now if I can remember their name or if I get another delivery this week to the apartment I went to, I can call them and be like, hey, are you in this building or this building? And see if they know. <laughs> I know that was kind of a weird twisted unorganized story but it was funny <laughs> that grown folks don't know their address but I'm supposed to know their address I wouldn't have been upset if the little boy didn't know his address I mean that's understandable if they just moved and he don't know his address but I feel like the parents should have known the address and if they didn't know their address and the address I went to was the one on my ticket. 
Why would they expect me to know their address? <laughs> All right, y'all. I got to go do a bunch of chores. I got to get supper ready. And I'm hoping one of Tony's prescriptions is ready before work. So if it is, I got to leave early and go do that. So I'll see y'all next time. Have a good one.